players. We have uh, on the right here, we have <laughs> Kamerman, who's on an absolute tear right now. Honestly, he's one of the players to watch, I think, this season. He's really erupted uh, onto the scene with some fantastic placements as of late and is really playing at the top of their game. And it's an all European clash here as well. No, it does look like we are. We're trying to find a, figure out what the deck lists are, who's actually, who's playing what here. It's, um, yeah, we'll find out in, in just a matter of moments what actually everybody is playing. You, you're right, Cameron has just been one of those players that looks a little bit like a lost box. Oh, I've seen some psychic energy, so it could be... Yeah, it could be a lost zone box, I could, think. We're just getting things going here, making sure our uh, players are ready at the table. Uh, this could be Brennan, I think, um, playing the Lost Zone variant. Of course, the Camermans are brothers, of course, and they look very similar. <laughs> no offense do. to them. They are twins. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it looks like... Um, yeah, it is, it is Brennan, of course. Okay. Yeah. And it I looks like Gudra. we're seeing Gudra from Hedy Brammy. Uh, Hedy is actually the player on the left side of the screen here. Uh, with the blue hats on, yes. and he is playing the Hisuian Gudra. I'm very excited for this, because uh, Gudra has been an archetype that I've been testing a lot in this last month or so. Oh, yes. Uh, I feel like it's pretty well placed. A lot of the data uh, that we've seen from online tournaments has pointed us towards Hisuian Gudra being very strong into the Lost Box deck, but also very strong into the Lugia matchup. As we are starting things off here, uh, it looks like um, we need to switch around these names, because Hedy is definitely the player on the left and Brennan's on the right. But yes. uh, we're seeing some opening hands. I think uh, Hedy has opening battle VIP pass and also has a uh, Confei in the active, so a very strong start for him. Yeah, that's what you need. If you can start Confei, get that turn one battle VIP pass. That is everything you're looking for. Start getting those Pokemon out. Start getting set up here. And, you know, Gagudra's an interesting deck because the first couple of turns can be quite slow. You do play one copy of that Cramorant, so you can try and get a little bit of early pressure on. But we're, um, you know, really going for the Hisui and Gudra. That's what you're looking for. And it can take a little bit of a while. You need to get that Mirage Gate on board very, very quickly, as quick as you possibly can, because you don't have as many Sableye and as many Cramorant. You don't, you don't have that same kind of early game that these traditional Lost Box decks actually do. As it stands, uh, we have a VIP pass for Hedy. He's going to look through his prize cards. Uh, it's always going to be good practice. You've got to keep an eye on your energy counts as well, thanks to the Mirage Gates in this deck list. That's still the go-to. That's kind of the top end of the Hisui and Gudra deck list, where um, they don't really mind so much about Sableye. They're just trying to get to that seven for the options to power up the Hisui and Gudra, as well as the Radiant Greninja, which, of course, can be another threat. And it looks like um, Hedy is not playing any... Um, Melanie, which is kind of the alternate approach to power up Asubi and Gudra, which really puts the pressure on Hedy to get lots of cards in the Lost Zone as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's just, it's full Mirage Gate here. You're right, there's no Melanie. It is Mirage Gate or manual attachment, and yep. Gudra's not made for manual attachment. <laughs> Some people played it in the past with Arceus. You play it with Melanie, you play it with Mirage Gate, but one way or another, you play it with Energy Acceleration. So we have got some flower selecting going on here. One card in the Lost Zone, but we see a switch. So there's going to be a second flower selecting coming in here and going first two cards in the lost zone that is not too bad at all you know if you can get maybe a treble flower selecting in the chorus's experiment there is an outside chance of a turn to mirage gate so decent start here yeah you love seeing two early flower selectings and also Hedy's going to use that beach court to retreat into radic greninja trying to force brennan into finding an escape rope in order to take a prize as well as getting four cards in the lost zone we presume a spit innocently is the earliest way that brennan can do anything oh my goodness but that his is hand not is good. poor <laughs> yeah, it is a turn <laughs> attachment to snorlax and nothing else we're straight back over to Hedy, who can begin with a chorus's experiment here um, Hedy still plays, obviously, one copy of Cramorant in his deck list, so he's yeah. got a very easy route here to get an early prize lead. Well, I was just saying, you know, he only plays one Cramorant, not really the goal. It's definitely the goal. It this is turn, now. It's the yeah. goal. <laughs> it is now, for sure. <laughs> he also hasn't developed any Gudra as well, so that'll be another thing on the checklist. I believe there's already an Ultra Ball in his hand, so it's whether or not he can also get towards a Nest Ball or a physical uh, basic Pokemon, because you'd love to additionally bench a Gudra as well as your uh, Cramorant here for some pressure. Yeah, you don't just want to go for the early Cramorant and then see your opponent explode into this great start and you don't even have a Gudra V down. 
didn't get it, unfortunately. An we extra switch card, but we don't want it to be a scape rope because Snorlax can sponge the hit. Yeah. You'd much rather avoid that. Looks yeah. like Hedy's eyeing up some discard fodder for this Ultra Ball here. It's going to be another Beach Court and that Drapion V by the looks of things. Uh, so I think Hedy probably just has to cram yeah. right here for tempo. Um, it's tempting to just get Hesu in Gudra because your opponent did so little. And I could also see the benefits of that, but also just initiating that race and just leaving a Snorlax alone is, is kind of fine right now. Yeah, I kind of like that. Plus, of course, with Beach Court out, you know, having a Snorlax in the active yeah. as the only Pokemon can't really use Beach Court. Thank so you. that's, you know, just a little bit more awkwardness for your opponent to have to try and get around here. So we're just kind of having a little bit of a look. How did you do all that stuff? It's all right. <laughs> I'm sorted. KO on the Sableye. And Hedy here is just on an absolute tear. You know, turn one, this is going very, very well. The we see top a deck is not great for Brennan either. I think it was the Cramorant. Oh. Um, there's actually not a huge reason to uh, bench this. I feel like just leaving Snorlax active and passing is the strongest play here because you're just giving up another prize card for free now. The only thing you're doing is respecting Hedy's like, burst potential just in case he's like a Giratina V or something like that where he could shred through yeah. a Snorlax. So Hedy, having not given away any signs of it being a Gudra just yet, that's kind of why Brennan's making this play, I feel. Yeah, I agree. And you're right. At the moment, it doesn't look like a Gudra deck at all. Um, it, There's it's... so much versatility in Lost Zone Box. <laughs> you have to respect so many cards. Yeah. It could just be nowhere within the player's reach, uh, but just based on board state and everything that Brennan's seen, it may well indicate uh, Giratina to him right now. Absolutely. So we do see an energy going away for that concealed card. Oh, gets a Gudra V off concealed cards. That's a good one. That is something you were searching for. Now the Absolutely. cat's out the bag, Joe. Yep. And Hedy's going to continue on this prize rampage with this Cramorant. <laughs> it's going to be two up. And we've also unlocked Mirage Gate now with seven oh. in the Lost Zone. So Hedy's taking the opportunity to power up his Hisuian Gudra here. And if I'm Brennan, game. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm not. This, this game might not last much longer. If your opponent's going up by two prizes with the Hisuian Gudra V and the energy on there, you know they're going to, you know, the whole point about playing against Gudra is you want to take the first couple prizes. Your opponent takes the first couple prizes and then brings in the completely undamaged Gudra V star to start wreaking havoc. It's, it is the opposite of what you're looking for. So I think we're going to see maybe one more turn from Brennan, one more top deck. We're not going to see much more in this game, it looks like. Now, we do see a Snorlax getting a KO here. Well, here so we go. We're thumping. Thumping with Snorlax <laughs> getting a response. But I believe Hedy should have attachment and V-Star. And that is going to be the first game. There we go. Very quick. Brennan had nothing to work with, let's be honest. Not much going on for him at all. Was able to scrape a prize slowly with Snorlax, but Hedy was in complete control. His loss zone was already fully fueled up to seven. We got the Mirage Gate play. We got the early V-Star. And got to be feeling good if you're Hedy here because this is already a pretty solid matchup for you, I feel. Um, but just because you're reducing so much damage from Brennan, who incidentally is actually playing the sort of Forest Seal Stone turbo -y approach, by the way. So he just really whiffed a lot of his outs. So if you are Brennan, you've still got 44 minutes on the clock. You've got a good amount of time to still win two games, but it's a real uphill battle already. Yeah, and if you're going to lose a game, losing it quickly is good. In Swiss, it can be kind of awkward. The, you know, the rounds aren't that long. 50 minutes sounds like a lot of time, but for three full games of the Pokemon TCG, it's not always a huge amount of time. So lose one nice and early, and then you've still got enough time to probably play the next two because it can't go any worse. <laughs> like, that is the worst-case scenario. What did you do? Oh, well, like, you see, I manually built up a Snorlax and took a KO on a Cramorant on turn three. Far from ideal, yeah. absolutely. And... Brennan, you know, in theory, he's playing a very consistent list. He's got those VIP pass. He's got the Nest Ball. He's got those two Forest Seal Stone to really help out as well, um, allowing you to cherry pick certain pieces. So that, unfortunately, is the rags and riches of Lost Zone Box sometimes. If you start that Confair, you get that early VIP, or if you hit that early Colorus, your deck starts flowing so well. But you just need one of those initial pieces just to unlock your hand that little bit. And it felt like Brennan was a little bit clogged with basic energy here. As we see those early prize cards, Brennan does only play one copy of Manaphy, and we do know Hedy has the option to use his Radiant Greninja, so that could be a big one to track. Yeah, that's one to watch out for as we go through the game. Though we do see a flower selecting turn one, which is quite nice, at least. I mean, it's already better than game one. This is already a better yeah. start. <laughs> even with Chorus in hand for next turn, so... And even getting rid of a battle Ooh. VIP pass, that's got to be a good card. Oh, it's Greninja. Nope. Yep, it's got to be the Radiant Greninja, okay. Oh. And we also have Energy. I mean, it's one of those tough things, but 
half of that VIP pass would have been Greninja anyway in the first place, I think, most of the time. <laughs> so I feel like you just take that. Oh, you have to. You can't put your raining Greninja in the lost zone. It's just, it, it's rough. Some, you know, turn one battle VIP pass in the lost zone is immediately just like, oh, what did he get? He's at least got a good card off it. Brennan's a little bit clogged right now. He's got a variety of attackers. You can see he's got that Kyogre. That's certainly a late game attacking threat. Oftentimes it can be used in like one prize lost zone mirrors potentially just because it has 130 hit points. But yeah. in this case, it's going to be far less good in these opening stages. Uh, he's got two of his three lost vacuum in hand yep. already. That is not <laughs> what you want turn one. No, just one flower selecting. It's a tough ask when you get VIP pass up against uh, Radiant Greninja turn one. Hedy's got a few things to map out. It looks like he's going to initiate with the Chorus's experiment. He does also have Ball Search in hand as well, uh, the Nest Ball. But he's going to see what's from the top five first. Oh, wow, he's got what a, a great start. Battle VIP <laughs> pass off the Chorus. Comfey in the active, Nest Ball in hand. That's an exceptional five cards. Yeah, for the second turn in a, a second game in a row, Hedy is going to have a very, very nice turn one. Um, there's even potential for a turn one Crammer in here if he wants to go that route. Yep. You know, you, you could just sit back and. and get your Sue in Gudra, that would be fine. But, you know, you've, you're going to get three cards in the Lost Zone. All you need is two switching cards, one Comfey, one Cramorant, and that is going to give you the turn one KO. And to be fair, when your opponent didn't do very much and they've only got one Comfey on the board, I like taking out their only Comfey. Yeah, Hedy's on the same page. It looks like straight away he eyed up the Cramorant as well as a Radiant Greninja. I think it's also a Nest Ball in hand, so yes. Hedy can easily get that Comfey to allow him to get to four with a few switching cards involved. So it should be pretty easy for Hedy to get the spit innocently here. And again, initiate that prize race, knock out the only Confey on Brennan's side of the field. I do like that Hedy is still taking his time here, still looking through the deck. It's one of those things where you can easily get carried away with yourself in games, where you feel like you've had a better start than your opponent and you're already a game up. Um, but that temptation doesn't mean you shouldn't still do your due diligence and look through the deck, make sure you know what you have access to and Hedy's certainly taking his time here, which uh, I think is definitely correct. No, absolutely, because sometimes there's nothing worse than looking through your deck for the card, being like, I'm going to win with this card. Oh, it was prized. I probably <laughs> should have known that. We've all, at least I've done it. I'm sure oh you did goodness. it. Oh, my goodness. VIP from the concealed cards oh as well. Oh, my goodness. This is ridiculous. It's actually too much. Hedy's hand is so stacked right now. <laughs> my hand so is many, too good. So many switch cards in there as well. Oh, this is going to be a phenomenal turn one. So it looks like we'll be getting the KO of the Cramorant. You've got your Hasui and Gudra V is going to be coming down as well. And this is this is going to be everything you look for. So, yeah, we've already got the Cramorant and the second Comfe and the Radiant Greninja and the Hasui and Gudra V. This is everything you need. I don't think, has he even played the Nest Ball yet? I think that's still in there, yeah. I think we're chilling, honestly. He also has just a physical Comfe in his hand. So it's going to be a quick flower selecting first here. This will allow him to get to three cards in the Lost Zone, eyeing up Boss's Orders and Metal Energy. Oh, that's again, that's an awkward choice. You want the Boss's Orders, but the Metal Energy can be quite big. How yeah, he does play three copies of Boss, so I think he has the license yeah. to pitch one, but actually keeps it in hand for maximum pressure here. But he does have five Metal Energy again, right. which is pretty good going. Right. He's got one in hand ready to attach, so... And we got four cards in the Lost Zone already, so Cramorant, if it can get into the active, it is on board, spit innocently. 110, zero energy is absolutely there. This is, um, yeah, this is pretty good. We, I, so the only thing you really could potentially want there is an energy on the Hasui and Gudra. Yeah. But you don't really need it. You manually retreat. Mirage Gate will fix it. <laughs> it's like exactly the case. And just Hedy was clogged up with escape ropes, and certainly uh, the Confe is the best target to take out here. Oh, yeah. As he once again initiates initiates the prize race. Brennan has a much easier time of putting VIP pass into the Lost Zone with his Colrus to begin his turn. Still has a bit of a debate on if you're getting rid of Holucha, yeah, wow. Up against, again, some really strong cards. Energy, just to see more cards with Radiant Greninja possibly this turn. Nest Ball as well. It gives him the backdoor option of Cramorant, but it could also be more explosive if he gets even more access to possibly even some uh, Forest Seal Stone action. Yeah, I, I still love the Horlucha Sableye double KO on a Comfey play. That's one I, I'm always a big fan of. Not possible now with that Horlucha in the Lost Zone. It ain't coming back from that. And you would never play more than one Horlucha in these right. kind of lists. So, unfortunately, that one is gone. We do see another Comfey coming out, which is good. We can at least get some flower selecting going. Um, I mean, to be fair, you, four cards on the Lost Zone shouldn't be too difficult this turn. So you could get a return KO with your own Cramorant as it's hitting the board here. Um... It's just, it always hurts when you don't initiate the prize race. Against a deck that's going to have a really good late game, 
you really want to be taking those first couple prizes. So it's a bit innocent in return here, and then just hope it takes Hedy a bit longer to get that Gudra roll in. I'm not even sure if we have the additional switch card. This might be a panic flower selecting. Ah, it's oh, going to be the lost go. vacuum. Okay, that's a much smarter way of doing things. <laughs> uh, not having any gambles with Confe. Instead, going to vacuum away his own beach court here that he used to retreat his Greninja. This will allow him to get two cards in the lost zone, getting him up to five. It's going to throw away another lost vacuum. So that double lost vacuum in had was a good thing. There you go. We helped him get there. <laughs> Level up the prize race. Five in the zone now for him, and it's back over to Hedy. Can he get to seven is the big question here, and top decking a Colrus is a great way to start. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, yeah, he can definitely get to seven. That'll you flower do it. select, yeah. your Colrus, jobs are good in. <laughs> the only headache now is that he has drawn a number of energy already. There's a, a couple in the lost zone, there's a few in his hand. He's already used concealed cards. Yeah, it's got um, his So if you draw too many of your energy, it obviously like kind of blocks your gate as well a little bit so you have to be a little bit cautious of how far you dig into the deck before you get to seven as it is though i don't mind Hedy just getting another gudra here getting two developed seems very strong in this matchup i'm only seeing one water energy in the deck and one or two metal yeah so, so if you draw that water energy that is going to hurt for mirage gate because you mirage gate one of the things about it of course is that you need to get two different kinds of basic energy so you need to have those two different types for dragon pokemon it's amazing because they always need different types exactly. But it can hurt if you draw too many cards. Oh, Drapion, great option, straight to the Lost Zone. So and now it's down to this chorus. If Hedy whiffs water, that's the best outcome for him, right? If he hits the water, that's going to really slow down his turn. Oh, he's good. He's hit Ooh. Mirage Gate. He's hit the V-Star. He's hit a Battle VIP pass that he does not mind throwing away. And a um, uh, spell. that's the one, again, pretty much useless in this matchup. So that was best case scenario. You've got Mirage Gate in hand, you've got the V-Star in hand. This is good. Yeah, we're in business now. I feel like Hedy wants to use Mirage Gate before this next Confe, even if he wants to use another Confe here. Yeah, you have to Mirage Gate first. Here we go, look at this. It's actually gonna be a Greninja play. There is no mana be developed. Oh, I love this even Moonlight more. It's gonna be Moonlight Shuriken play. A two prize turn here for Hedy. That is huge. Yeah, getting so fixated on the Asui and Gudra, and Hedy's like, nah, I've got... I've got a better play. <laughs> yeah, I love this play. Does he have so... any more gates as well? If he... Oh, my goodness, he has double gate. <laughs> and he actually had another water and metal in the deck remaining. Oh, so there was... So he can oh. also turn attack to Greninja whilst powering up and evolving into a V-Star. Hedy's having the best of it right now. <laughs> I mean, as far as it goes, this is this is pretty gosh darn good. So yeah, this is this is perfect, frankly. I mean, you can take out the Sableye and the Comfey here, take a two prize turn, and leave your opponent with really not very much. And then, you know, you have taken three prizes before the goo even comes out. Yeah, and even the, the Greninja can even tank a Cramorant hit, which is pretty much all Brennan is threatening right now. So there's really not much going on for him. No. Brennan's best response would be getting to seven himself and going for a Greninja play straight back into Hedy, but he's still falling behind in the prize race, and he will have to get through this Gudra at some point. That's the other thing. You can take out the two Comfey, but the problem is Comfey is brilliant for getting you set up. Hedy needs a turn attachment. That, that's basically <laughs> it. That's basically all he needs for the next few turns. That, he can live with just that. Brennan, so Brennan can't draw many cards. He has to Clara and will now use Radiant Greninja to see two cards. Two energy. This is two energy, yeah. That's, Literally just that's two energy. so poor for him. Now it's going to be a turn attached retreat. Cramorant play is the best option he has, I think. Is this is so rough. Not I feel like you have to protect for. your Radiant Greninja because you still need to take those two prizes at some point. Even possibly just retreat into Confe could be another play here. Yeah, that could work. But it looks like we are retreating into Cramorant here and just, you know, getting that attack going. It's, it's not perfect, but... It, it at least it, it gets some it gets some damage on the board, which is you know it's something. Yeah, but it feels like Hedy can really tighten his grip this turn with that turn attachment. It's all he needs uh, to be super ahead, to be honest with you. Um, and he's just mulling through. Look how large his hand size is. He has so many <laughs> options right now. A boss's orders on Radiant Greninja could also be a great play just to protect yourself because Gudra doesn't play uh, Manaphy, so instead just knock out a Greninja could be a solid choice because you've just seen a Clara played on the previous turn. Oh. That feels like a good option. Yeah, that's nice. We know your opponent's going to be less likely to be able to get it back. Of course, two Clara Brennan, is look standard at the body in language Lost from Brennan. He just knows. Yeah. He knows how far behind he is right now in this game. He can't afford to lose oh, yeah. another, but it seems like Hedy's happy enough just dealing with Confe and just put 
Brennan even further behind on that loss zone counter of his own. He's still only at five. And yeah, we're rolling. Uh, the Rolling Iron, this is one of the strongest attack effects I feel in the game. This combination of Moisture Star and Rolling Iron just makes Hisui and Gudra so chunky. <laughs> and your opponent so often has to... Yeah, and there we go. Uh, Brennan knows that he is too far behind. His hand is not cooperating. And the Gudra would just get too far ahead there with just announcing Rolling Iron. That's all it would take from Hedy to close out the game. And Brennan, he doesn't want to look back at that hand ever again. I think he had a really rough time with both of these games here. Yeah, Hedy does take the win two games to zero. And, and you're right, Brennan never really got going in this game. That was a little bit of a problem. It was never... It, it, we've never really had that back and forth. And, you know, you said yourself that this Gudra has a pretty good classic Lost Box matchup right. because there's not that much in these Lost Zone decks that can really deal with a Gudra rolling. But if you take the first couple of prizes and then that Gudra comes out, you know, you're taking 80 less damage when you get attacked, which kind of forces your opponent to either do very little damage or maybe try and drop damage counters with Sableye. But if you use those single prize attackers, they're giving a turn up they're giving a prize up every turn. Then you've got Moisture Star, which, you know, once during the game, your V-Star power completely heals you up. Yep. And, you know, undoes a couple of turns worth of attacking, and it can be very hard. Most decks either have a way through Gudra or lose to Gudra. Yeah, and it looks like Hedy's approach really is similar to the pr uh, previous format. I feel like a lot of the sort of new age Gudra builds that we've seen uh, getting some online placements have incorporated that Melanie. But Hedy's just saying, no, I still want the double Roxanne. I'll allow Raihan to be that sort of backup supporter for a little bit of energy acceleration, but still sticking true to the quad Mirage Gate and just helping him cycle through the deck. So it seems to have worked very well for Hedy. And let's be honest, he initiated that prize race. And when you're going ahead as Gudra, you're not really going to fall behind. I think the only way that Brennan could conceivably get back into that game would be like huge Kyogre combo plays. But he was nowhere near towards the bottom of his deck at that point because he just didn't really have a good time with things. No, unfortunately not. That Kyogre, of course, it's, it's a little bit lucky. It depends how many energy you see <laughs> off the top of your deck. Can potentially do, I think, 250 to two bench Pokemon if you can hit five energy off the top of your deck. It's a lot to ask for. But, like you say, that takes time to actually establish, right. to get the Koga, to get the energy, to get low enough in your deck that you feel confident you're actually going to be able to hit all that energy mm -hmm. from the deck. And it, it was just never going to work. And that's the thing when you're playing against Gudra. If you can, you know, cheat the first couple, not cheat the first couple of prizes, <laughs> but, you know, get a few cheeky prizes. That's what I'm sure. looking for, Joe. Get a few cheeky prizes in the early game. And then, you know, a lot of decks, it's, well, I can kind of two-hit KO, especially if you can get a hit on the Gudra when they haven't just used their attack. Right. and then force a moisture star and it, it's very difficult but decks like Gardevoir you know can bring up a big Zash and V and get a couple of hits right and you know because Gujra's only hitting 200 you can often tank a hit or two and then you can maybe challenge it yeah but you've got to get ahead in the game to get to that <laughs> point where you do it yeah and Gudra loves slowing down that tempo and just making it play its own game plan just saying <laughs> we're both going to hit each other back and forth for a little while but I know I have that little flip the switch of just completely healing. And that's one of the biggest skills of Gudra. And as you said, one of the best ways around this is trying to piece together rope boss's orders plays and such, just getting around the rolling iron effect yeah. is one of the biggest plays. Uh, but I actually really enjoy Gudra and I feel like it's a great play for this tournament just based on the expected meta game. And it's no surprise it's getting a decent amount of meta share today because it feels like it's uh, pretty well placed. And you say, you know, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of kind of running it back. Lost Zone was good pre-rotation. Gudra yeah. was good pre-rotation. Lugia was good pre-rotation. Mew was good pre-rotation. The only really new deck, and there's obviously a giant caveat here, <laughs> but the only really new deck we've got here is Gardevoir. Now, all the other decks have changed quite a lot. The loss of Scoop Up Net in Lost Zone sure. is huge. Lugia has completely changed its identity to a single strike deck. But at its core, it's a lot of the same kind of decks. And I think good players can go, I looked so many games of Gudra pre-rotation. Right. And it's not quite the same, but I've still, a lot of that experience is still going to do me good as I, as I play Gudra in this new format. Yeah, and uh, Brennan's actually a great example of that. He's played Lost Zone Box for many months with great placements. So he said, I'll stick to what I know. And Hedy, he's taken the gamble and changed on to Gudra recently, but it seems to have worked out.